Welcome one and all to the next episode of Laugh on Your Ass. Tonight, we have some new faces and some old faces. Get ready for an episode of Laugh so sick and detasteful, you will question your morality. Just like Sicily. Picture, Sicily, 1983. Orgies have just been legalized in retirement homes. I mean, it's fun for them, but visitors just start to get the full Monty. And explaining isn't always on the menu. Nana, I gotta go. But, I'll help you into bed. Okay, time for the teeth. Mmm. Nana. Mm mm. Nana, why are your teeth not coming out? And why the hell does this room smell like old people, but sweatier? And why are you smiling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nana, you're a sick woman. And up next is one of the most true blue Australian comedians you'll ever hear. We have one of the most Australian sets of the night. Whether or not this is a good or bad thing is up to you to decide. Everyone, make way for Sheriffin. Come on stage, were you? <laughs> Quite the vanilla surprise. <laughs> so, uh, I guess you're all wondering how I got my name. Pretty, uh, pretty simple. My parents converted to Islam before having us kids. Keep in mind that I'm number six <laughs> out of seven. <laughs> Yeah, they really got into the Muslim spirit there, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> After the uh, third child, my dad was, no kidding, literally the wiki keeper for the midwife. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, dad! She's the next Australian fast bowler! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... That never stopped my older brother telling me that I was an accident. <laughs> so I remember as a kid, I went up to my mum and I was just like, Mom, was I an accident? No, darling. You were a wonderful surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so I was an accident. <laughs> Okay, there are any smokers in the house? Yeah! Yeah? Someone raise their hand, I can't see shit. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, at the back. Where, when was the first time you had a smoke? Uh, 14. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Do you want to know when I had my first smoke? Yeah. Seven. <laughs> that year was... Hectic to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, pretty sure it was just me and my brother. And uh, he comes up to me and he's like, You smoked before? No. You been high before? No. You been drunk before? No. Have you had a wank before? <laughs>
snuck into his parents' bedroom and uh, accidentally find your mum's dildo. <laughs> <laughs> or simply setting a mattress on fire and leaving it out in the rain. <laughs> Let, let's go with that one. <laughs> at the house to myself, had my childhood best friend over. And he's like, oh, mate, what do you want to do? I'm like, you know, I've got some matches. Let's burn some shit. <laughs> uh, couldn't help but notice there was a bang mattress in the carport. Fuck knows why. Uh, don't know what my dad was standing up to. But, um, so, you yeah, know, we just start flicking matches at it. And next thing we know, the whole mattress is on fire. And my mate's like, Fuck! What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I was like, Mate, it's alright. If you look out there, you can see that it's raining. <laughs> Let's get the mattress on the fucking grass and eventually it will go out. So we chuck it on the lawn and fucking my mum gets home. <laughs> she's like, Sharon, why on earth is the mattress on the lawn in the rain. some of the leaves off the plant. Keep in mind, I was not aware of rolling papers. So I ended up using a A4 piece of printing paper, <laughs> rolled it up, and smoked it in the toilet. I was like, what? This isn't doing shit. So I grabbed a few more leaves and decided to put it in my ice cream. <laughs> Ate that shit up. I was like, I'm still not doing shit. Next minute, I'm passed out on my bed. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 what a bloody trooper. I tell you, mate, good on him. Up next is the one and only John Cooper, ready to go, ready to row the mullet with the bullet. He's gonna get your asses with some grasses. Everyone, John Cooper. <laughs> Christ, you're tall. <laughs> Are we going, guys? Woo! Yeah. Uh, yeah? Uh, 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 oh, sorry, George. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just. Uh, I really want to just say one thing, really. How great are mums? Yeah. Aren't they fantastic? They're so supportive and wonderful. You know, I'm a stand-up comedian by night and a self-represented actor by day, and my mum is so supportive. I, I send her emails with all my little videos attached to it, and she immediately sends them back, you know, with check this out and several job applications. <laughs> <laughs> they're wonderful, they're great. So, oh. um, but yeah, she, uh, she is fantastic. She raised us uh, all by herself from a very young age, and she did a wonderful job. Um, she's funny, she's caring, she's kind. She's a little bit racist. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely her fault, you know. It's a, she's a product of her generation, and her 
There, my grandmother was more righteous than uh, Trump's love letters to North Korea. <laughs> but she is, and uh, not too long ago, she, uh, she went home and I was staying over at her place and she was really fussed and angry. I'm like, Mom, what's wrong? What happened? It's like, oh, was that the bank? And this guy just cut straight in front of me and went straight to the teller. I tried to get his attention and he just ignored me and pretended he couldn't hear. The teller didn't do anything about it, and it's just irritating. I can't believe it happened. But you know, that's what they're like. <laughs> Those South Africans. <laughs> Especially the white ones. <laughs> Mom, that's a little bit racist, don't you think? I'm not racist! I work with Asians all the time! <laughs> that's a legitimate back and forth between me and my mother. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, well, I said before that my mom raises. The reason for that is because uh, my father, my biological father, passed at a very young age. Um, and as a dad myself, I began to realize something. Uh, you know, parents are people, and it really threw me. You know, like, it's just a person pretending to know what they're doing constantly, <laughs> hoping against hope that these kids aren't going to realize that you're just bullshitting them about <laughs> everything. And so they have their kids, and they ask you for advice, and you're like, I don't fucking know. I'm just going to load your kids with sugar and cordial and send them home. <laughs> Really got me is I didn't really get to know my dad very much. So I started wondering like what, what he used to do. And keep in mind, when I was born, my dad was 60. Like he was born in the 1940s. He lived through World War II. And I wonder like what could he have done for fun? Did we have anything in common? I don't know. I'm thinking what I do for fun is video games and stuff like that. But that didn't exist back then. So what did my dad do for fun? And I didn't have an answer, so I guess I asked my siblings. You know, I, I asked Chelsea, Melanie. Sandy, Jenny, Graham, Randall, Gary, Debbie, and Lisa. But no one knew. <laughs> oh God. So living in a house, uh, you know, full of menstruation has its disadvantages as a teenage male. And it really got me when I was on set recently uh, for a TV series. I unexpectedly got pulled over for some lines and I was super excited. <laughs> I was very happy and I'm like, I'm gonna nail this, this is gonna be fantastic. So I came up and I was ready to go. And I'm like, what do you need me to do, director? He's like, you need to flirt with the barman. I'm like, no worries, one question. How do you flirt? <laughs> So he gave me a quick crash course, he set me up, he's like, alright, here you go, you need to get up in her face, you need to put your arm up like this, and you need to say something like, what time do you get off? I'm like, no worries, good, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. And he's like, action, uh, cut, what? Johnny looked terrified at her. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so I went to room, I was fine, I get in close, I'm sorry, and it's all good, I'm right there, I'm ready to go, and I'm like, okay, ready, set. God, my brain goes, do it in Scottish! <laughs> <laughs> so what time do you go? <laughs> I kid you not, she looks me dead in the eyes and goes, too late for you. <laughs> Using all of my experience of living with women and all the training I have as an actor, my professional response was, Man's got talent, I tell you. Up next is a comedian from over the seas where the Trump blows an American trying to take on the Australian comedy scene. I give you the one, the only American talent. Thank you, thank you. Uh, 
I've I've already killed it. Look at it. Look at it. Uh, people always talk about how crap music is nowadays. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, I found out, like, I tried to listen to some older music, like some 70s, 80s, and it was creepy as shit. <laughs> like, this was romantic. I could have died in your arms tonight. <laughs> Hide the body. <laughs> uh, Post Up California was basically just like a peyote fever dream gone wrong. <laughs> Anything that the Beatles did, like, after they went to India, like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I've been known to have a drink from time to time, if you couldn't tell by the shirt that my Nana gave me. <laughs> uh, it, that, that's all well and good, unless you come from a family like mine who don't drink very often. Uh, and back in the US, that also meant, like, you know, from the ages of 18 to 21, I couldn't go to a pub. And so I had to kind of, like, secret drink, like hiding in the basement uh, with a bottle of whiskey that like shouldn't be consumed by humans, because that's all I could afford. Um, which, which was all well and good until like I started making a connection that like late enough at night uh, in the US on television, they stopped showing regular programs on TV, they would just start showing infomercials. And the late night ones were always very specifically tailored to people like me. <laughs> like I heard steel drums and then just saw a bunch of naked girls apparently going wild. <laughs> I'm 18 and I'm drunk, it's go time. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's masturbation. <laughs> but the, the, it, it, was, it was great, it was like the highlight of my night. Um, which is saying something in itself. But the problem was that these com these infomercials would have commercials within them. So like, I'd be getting down to business and you know, doing what needs to be done. And then the screen goes black. And I'm suddenly being serenaded by Sarah McLachlan. <laughs> And I've got like a one-eyed cat looking me dead in the eye and the ASPCA number is on the bottom asking me to donate. And this is where a decision has to be made. I chose poorly. I thought I could soldier on. I thought I could get through it. I'm like, you know what? I'm far enough along. It's going to be more painful in the morning if I don't do it. And then I got this like three-legged dog dragging something along the highway. I'm crying. I help. I help. I help. Oh, we're good. We're good. Everything is better now. So my family's not that proud of me. I'm not sure why. I went home a few weeks ago and uh, to surprise my little brother who's graduating from high school and it kind of turned into one of those conversations with my dad and, and he's like, you know, don't have kids. <laughs> like, look, I love you, I love you, but don't deal with what I dealt with. <laughs> My mom always tells me that if I was born first, I would have been the only child. <laughs> None of this is a joke. Why are you laughing? At me? This, is, this is my real trauma here. All right. So I'm single. Yeah. Couldn't tell by the fact that I'm not allowed in a pet store anymore. <laughs> I've, I've been on Tinder lately, and Tinder's just gotten weird now. Like, a lot of girls have started using their bio section as like a, a memorial for somebody. Like, oh, rest in peace, grandma. Like six, seven, seventeen. How do I make an opening line from that? <laughs> hey, I'm uh, sorry to hear about your grandma. Here's an unflattering picture of my dick. <laughs> She's not the only stiff one. Oh! 
Thank you everybody for watching this thing. I'll see you next time on the comedy show of Adelaide, made by me and everyone else who actually has motherfucking talent. Bye.